Hi, that's an Asus ROG Rapture GT6. And in this video, I'm gonna open the box, talk about its features, set it up, put it to the test, and finally share with you my thoughts after using it for almost two weeks. Before we start though, a special thanks to ASUS for sending me this free GT6 unit so we can set it up, test it and see what's what. This is a tri-band game ready Wi-Fi mesh system. There are two nodes that use ASUS AI mesh technology to provide the mesh network. One node serves as the main router, also known as the AI Mesh Router, which is directly connected to the modem. The other node though, which is the AI Mesh node, is connected to the main router through a backhaul connection. These are tri-band devices, meaning that there is a dedicated 5 GHz band for the backhaul, which is good. It is also capable of using UNI4 Spectrum, also known as 5.9 GHz band, which can bring a third and clear 160 MHz channel without any radar interference. Theoretically, it can provide speeds of up to 10,000 megabits per second. As for processing power, each device has a 1.7 GHz tri-core processor, and 512 megabytes of DDR4 RAM. Each device has four Ethernet ports, one 2.5 gigabits per second WAN and three 1 gigabits per second LANs. There is also a single USB 3.2 port. If the AI Mesh node is using a wireless backhaul, then its WAN port can be used as an extra LAN port. Together they can provide Wi-Fi coverage of up to 5800 square feet. This mesh Wi-Fi system is made for gamers, so it has features that can help provide a better gaming experience. Such as triple level game acceleration which can reduce lag and latency. Now size wise, they're not that big, I mean this is my hand and this is a GT6 unit which is good. Design wise, I think they look good. I mean, the design is simple, but at the same time stylish. The top part is actually transparent, which allows you to see some of the antennas, which I think is really cool. Each device has nine internal antennas and also uses ASUS Range Boost Plus technology. Now, two of them are smart antennas and they work on the dedicated backhaul within the mesh routers. Speaking of antennas, I'm actually beginning to prefer internal antennas over the external ones because lately I have uh, broken some external antennas. The only problem that I have with the internal antennas is that I'm actually not too sure about the Wi-Fi range when the antennas are internal. That's why I really want to test these and that's what we're going to do later in this video. But for now, let's set up the system. First things first, I'll make sure the distance between them is somewhere between 1 and 3 meters. But of course after they're up and running, I can move the AI Mesh node to its permanent location. I'm gonna turn them on and it should take a few minutes for the LED lights to turn solid blue, which means they're now ready for setup. 
Next, by using an Ethernet cable, I'm gonna connect the WAN port of the main router to the modem. I usually set up my wireless routers by using a laptop and a wired connection. But here you can do that by using a smartphone as well, which is really easy. So in this video, I'm gonna do that. So first, I need to download the ASUS router app, which is available for Android and iOS. Then I'm gonna open it and set up a new router. Now I need to add the main router to the app. I can do that either by scanning its QR code, which is on the bottom of the router, or maybe just by selecting it manually here. I'm just gonna scan the QR code. At this point, I need to create my Wi-Fi networks. This is a tri-band wireless router, meaning that if I want, I can have three different wireless networks with different names and passwords. Or just have them share the same name and password, which this one is called Smart Connect, and I have a whole video dedicated to that. So feel free to check it out if you want to know more details and also want to see which one you should use. Now I just need to create the router's admin username and password, and then I'll be almost done with the basic configuration of the routers. Because after that, and after a few minutes, the main router's LED light turned white, indicating that it had successfully connected to the internet. After a few more minutes, the same thing also happened to the AI mesh node, indicating that it had also successfully connected to the internet. Essentially, both devices were online now. Now, to complete the basic configuration, I just need to make sure that both devices have the latest firmware installed. The router has detected that there is a newer firmware available and it is suggesting that I should install it. So I'm going to do that. After it was successfully installed, I was able to see a diagram of my network that showed the main router and the AI mesh node. However, here I noticed a message indicating that a new firmware was still available. I discovered that only the main router had been updated and not the AI mesh node. Luckily, I was able to easily update the AI mesh node with just the touch of a button. Alright, now that everything is up and running, let's do the Wi-Fi range test. So, when there is a new wireless router and I want to test its Wi-Fi range, what I usually do is use a Wi-Fi analyzer app on a smartphone or laptop to check the signal strength of the wireless router in three different places in my house. Then I compared side by side with another wireless router whose range I've already checked. This comparison should give me a good understanding of how the range of the new wireless router is. Of course I'll make sure I'm testing one router at a time so they're not gonna interfere with each other. Also I'm gonna make sure they're exactly located in the same spot. And of course they're using the same Wi-Fi channels. So here I'm going to compare the range of a GT6 with the range of an RTAX 86U for the 2.4 GHz and one of the 5 GHz bands. Well, as you can see, and to my surprise, not only was the signal strength of the GT6 not any lower than the RTAX 86U in almost every area, but it was also slightly better. This improvement may not be significant and may even be difficult to notice, but the fact that it could easily keep up with the RTAX 86U, which let's not forget, according to that video, it was considered the best wireless router money could buy in 2021, and I guess even in a good part of 2022, that only means one thing to me, the Wi-Fi range of the GT6 is good. Plus, it is also tri-band, and there is a second one that if used correctly can extend the Wi-Fi range even further. 
All right, now let's move on to the speed test. So if you follow the channel, then you probably know that I usually use iPerf to do a throughput or a speed test. iPerf is actually a very great tool for that purpose. But if you're not familiar with it, then feel free to check out that video first. So I have set up this scenario to do the speed test. Basically the iPerf server is connected through a simulated internet connection and the speed all the way from the router to the server is 2.5 gigabits per second. The iPerf client though is connected to the 5 GHz Wi-Fi of the AI Mesh node and it is equipped with a Wi-Fi 6 e-wireless network card. The distance between the client and the AI Mesh node is around 7 meters or 23 feet. Now the backhaul connection between the main router and the AI Mesh node is also wireless and the second 5 GHz radio is dedicated to that. So two different radios are used for the backhaul and for the client which is good. The distance between the nodes is around 15 meters or 50 feet. So when I run the speed test, I will be able to see how this dedicated backhaul can perform here as well as this Wi-Fi for the clients. I have already talked about how beneficial a dedicated wireless backhaul could be compared to a backhaul which is shared with the clients in other videos. I'm gonna link some of them in the video description in case you are interested. Now let's start the speed test. Okay, I guess there's a lot to talk about. But first, I should mention that wireless is kind of a strange medium. I mean, there are many factors involved that can tremendously impact its performance. For example, obstacles, noise, interference, there are even different types of interference. And each country might even have different rules when it comes to wireless networks. For example, that UNI 4 or even 160 megahertz channels might not even be available in some places. So long story short the results that we saw in my tests are actually very specific to my testing environment here and it doesn't mean everybody should see the same results now as far as the speed test I should point out that I tried to make that scenario something close to what we might see in the real world I mean I didn't intentionally keep the nodes close to each other to make sure the signal is strong because I wanted to see more realistic results so I think 1.12 gigabits per second is really good considering the fact that we were not not only testing the speed of a single wireless router but rather the whole mesh system including a wireless backhaul so I can guess if the backhaul was not dedicated and was actually shared and that's something we usually see more often in dual band mesh systems that number could not have been anywhere close to 1.12 gigabits per second so my overall experience with the ASUS ROG Rapture GT6 and in the past two weeks that I've been using it was great. I mean, I haven't had any wireless coverage issues. I don't live in a big house. It is 2,000 square feet, including the backyard. It is probably close to 3,000. Now, one of the GT6 units, if installed correctly, can pretty much cover my whole house. And I have around 45 wired and wireless devices connected to the network work and they all have been working fine. I'm very pleased to see how much the ASUS AI Mesh system has improved over the years. If you're a long time follower of this channel then you might remember that when it had first come out one of my concerns was that the nodes would just randomly go down. I'm happy to say that the ASUS AI Mesh system for the GT6 has been rock solid and very stable. Now that being said, I should also mention that I realized the RAM is almost always around 76 or 77% full, which is kind of alarming. I mean, I haven't had any issues because of that, so I don't know if the GT6 is actually designed to be like this, and I understand that it's a game-ready system and is packed with many features, but I think I would be more comfortable if this number wasn't that high. So I'm going to have an eye on this and I'll update you in case any Anything changes. The CPU usage though has been low and good. 
All right, we did it. A lot happened in this video and it took a long time to make it. So I really hope you liked it. Now I could have added a few more tests, but I just didn't want to make this video too long. So please hit that like button if you liked the video. And if you think I should make a part two, write me in the comments below what exactly you want to see in that video. If this video gets many likes and requests, I'll definitely make that part two. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos and also check out the video description for other related videos and also for more up-to-date information about the ASUS GT6 system. Thank you again and I will see you next time.